So in this lesson, I'll be running through how to use Marlink, which is our flight planning and flight operation software. In this lesson, I'm going to be specifically teaching you how to plan a flight with Marlink. If you look to the left hand side of Marlink, you can see we have flight planning and map layers in blue. These are actions that you'll normally take in the office. And then in yellow, we have our actions that you'll normally take out in the field. So your checklist, your flight telemetry, and also some advanced options. So in order to insert our map layers, you can see at the moment we have a satellite image. You can go to the screen. If you press the plus icon here, you can bring up the extra options for background layers. So you can see we can bring in an open street map, WMTS, MB tiles, a previously saved flight plan or mapping region or Marlink, or a KML or KMZ. And for this, we can adjust the opacity and therefore overlay as many layers as we want. But for this, we'll just use a Bing aerial map. Now to zoom in on the surveying location that you're going to be operating from, you can center in on the takeoff point, the home point, the GPS location of the laptop, if you have that functionality, or the location of Marlin. For this, Marlin needs to be powered on, and also you need to have your radio interface running between your ground station and Marlin. Uh, what we can also do is just enter in a location. So this is Delft in the Netherlands where we'll do a practice survey and we'll center in on there. Now if we're happy with the background map that's on our screen, we can just press this down icon here and then also the download icon and that will make sure it's saved offline for when you go out in the field. Now to plan a flight, just click this button here. So for flight planning, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our parameters. So at the moment, we've got a transition at 80 meters into forward flight. So this is the transition altitude where we change from helicopter to airplane mode. And we've got our transition back from airplane mode to helicopter mode at 80 meters. And we've got our GSD at 1.5 centimeters. So in order to turn that GSD into a correct flying altitude, we then go to our camera screen. You can see at the moment, the Sony QX1, the 20 megapixel option is selected. But if I go here, I can select the Sony RX1 42 megapixel camera or our multi-spectral sensors from Nikasense. I'll select the 42 megapixel sensor for this example. And you can see that at 1.5 centimeters, it's automatically set our forward flight altitude at 120 meters. We can also set our planned takeoff location. So let's just say we're operating from this field here. I will just set our planned takeoff location here. It's as simple as clicking on the map. Now this is only used for the battery estimation. We don't use this for the actual flight. Uh, during the checklist, the actual GPS location of Marlin gets sent to the autopilot and that is what's used as our true home point. But uh, if we are happy with these, we can go to this screen here where it says edit mapping regions and we just click the plus icon. Now to create a mapping region, all you need to do is just set the nodes of your polygon. Now you can see we've just made a very simple flight plan here. We can also add extra polygons if we like or delete them if we like as well and the flight lines are automatically generated it's automatically generated to have the most efficient flight of Marlin. Uh, now to set the direction uh, I always prefer to have the direction directly in and directly against the wind while also having nice long flight lines so for a flight plan like this let's just set line direction we can set our side lap I always usually keep it at 60% and also our expected ground elevation so what you can do is if you're expecting a different heights uh, a change in elevation along your mapping area you can break this polygon up into multiple sets and then put them at different 
elevations. So uh, you can put an expected ground elevation in steps of 10 meters, for example. Uh, we can also change the flight into a cross pattern flight if we want to get good oblique imagery. And you can also see we have a readout of the area here. Now, what you can also do, which is a really good functionality within Maralink, is you can immediately drag and drop a KML or KMZ file, and that will automatically generate a polygon, and you'll get your flat lines in there as well. Now, the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to set some safety parameters. So you can set a geofencing radius, which is basically a circle around the home point that Marlin will not fly over. If it does fly over that, it will automatically return to home. You can see that that is represented on the map by this red circle that you can see there. Zoom back in. Now the next thing we can set is our automatic return home on low battery. Uh, now I normally set this at 30%, but you can also set it on more if you so like. See our last safety option here is return on lost GCS link. So this essentially sends the aircraft back if it hasn't had a link by radio for more than 30 seconds. Now the, the drone is operating completely independently of the ground station during its flight, uh, but as a safety feature you can set this to return home. So if you're happy with your flight parameters, your safety parameters, you've got the right camera selected, uh, you can also check your mapping lines and you can delete or change the direction of these mapping lines if you like. Plus you can check your energy usage, then you can go off and fly. Now just to give you an overview when you're looking at this, uh, if you want to check how the drones going to fly. Uh, you can see it's going to take off from the home location here. It's going to fly to line number one, the green part of line number one. It's going to fly here and then it's going to skip a line and then fly to line number two. And the reason that it skips a line is that a shallower turn is always easier on the battery for Marlin. And then it's going to come down and go to line number three, skip two lines this time and do line number four number five and then it's going to fly home now as a best practice it's always very good to check the path of Marlin before you take off and while you're doing it and this flight planning screen is always the most effective time to do it you want to see how easy it is for Marlin to climb to altitude before it gets to its first mapping line you want to see how Marlin's flight lines correspond with any restricted airspace see that this yellow part here is uh, representative of the turning radius of Marlin but I would always put a little bit extra on the end of that as a buffer zone if you're near any restricted areas and also you want to check the flight lines against the wind so as I was saying before I would typically uh, plan Marlin's flight lines to be directly upwind and directly downwind as that results in a more dependable actual flight when you're when you're actually doing the survey uh, however at high wind speeds this can affect your frontal overlap on the both the upwind and the downwind leg so if the winds over about 35 kilometers an hour up in the air I would recommend to set your flight lines at about a 45 degree offset from the wind direction and this will ensure that you're able to make each of the turns so it doesn't overshoot any of the turns and also that you still have a somewhat predictable flight plan. Now another thing to keep in mind is also how Marlin is doing its turns in relation to the wind. So if you are a little bit offset to the wind, you want to make sure that the majority of the turns are into the wind. So turning into the wind is generally considered to be best practice for flying Marlin. If it's turning with the wind, it's obviously a little bit harder to make each turn and so sometimes it will overshoot and then need to have another attempt at making that flight line. So you can see here it's going from one to two. Now if the wind was coming from the bottom of the screen that would be a good 
way of making Marilyn turn. So you can see it would be coming from one to two and it would be going into the wind if it was coming from the bottom of the screen. And that tends to be best practice. Now, down here at the bottom, you can also see a summary of all of your main parameters as well. Now, if you're happy with all of this and you've looked at your flight plan and you've checked everything, you can save this flight plan and it will be ready for you when you go into the field.